Hi, and thanks for joining me. Hello everyone. I've come out of the marina for a few days to test some changes I've made to my electrical equipment. <laughs> I'll go into that in a moment. I wasn't really intending to make a vlog, but as I often do when I go cruising, I put the bow cam on the front of the boat. <laughs> And apart from that, I didn't do any other filming. I came out on Sunday, actually. It's Tuesday today. It was a lovely sunny day on Sunday. And I've come out because I've made various changes to the electrical equipment on the boat. I have already mentioned that I've had a new inverter. I've also replaced my four leisure batteries recently. And I have actually bought a power station and the power station is like a battery bank. I've bought a 600 watt one. It is not a branded item. I paid less than 300 pounds for it. This is it. It's quite heavy. <laughs> it has USB outlets. It has a mains outlet here as well. It's got through charging, which means I can be charging this whilst using it on my equipment. The reason I've bought that is that I'm thinking of using one of these power banks on my laptop and another one on my television. This will save using battery power on the boat, particularly in the winter when the solar is less reliable. In fact, I think, have I mentioned or not, I can't remember now, I've got a third solar panel on the boat as well. <laughs> so I've made various improvements. It's not the best time to come out and test anything because there's no sun. There was some sun on Sunday. Yesterday it rained all day. <laughs> I say all day, but most of the day. And today it has been dull, had some rain early on and so forth. But I've come out to do this, this testing. So yesterday I was using my laptop with the power station and that went very well. I've also used it with the television. I actually did some testing whilst I was in the marina when I first bought it. And in very, very rough terms, as I say, this is branded 600 watt, but it actually I think gives out 560 watts. But from the use I've made of it with the tests I've done so far, I would say it will run the laptop for about 10 hours, possibly longer, and the television for 10 hours. The percentage use varies depending with how many watts are going out. And how many watts are going out seems to vary as to whether you're actually typing on the laptop or doing something with it or whether it's sitting idle. Likewise with the telly. The telly, I think, is branded 24, 26 watts, and you can see it's giving that out. Sometimes it drops down to 12. I don't pretend to understand any of that, but I am very, very pleased with this purchase. And next year I will buy another one. There is one, same make as this, I think. These are made in China, there's no surprise there, but they're not a branded make. Um, there is one with blue covers, <laughs> which actually has two outlets on it here, two 13 amp outlets, so I'll probably buy one of those next year. A lot of these power stations run into the £1,000 plus mark um, for 1,000 watts or kilowatt, 
but I'm happy with these. I think it's a good way for me to do things. So far, all has gone very well with the batteries. I'm very pleased with everything. I am concerned that I haven't engaged with you personally so much this year. I've done a lot of filming. When I filmed the winter, <laughs> when I filmed the summer cruise, I filmed very intensively over my two weeks when I went out to Tixel Wide and then I published that and I made 20 episodes from it. I think I've mentioned this already. Next year I will be doing things differently. I want to film and publish, film and publish. Having said that, between now and Christmas I have three non-cruising topics to publish. One is one is at the pumping station, Western Island Pumping Station. I was at our railway gala, which was held um, on bank holiday weekend in August. I filmed there for two days. The first day I filmed, we had a sort of uh, photo chart. It was the first time we'd done that. We actually had a visiting steam locomotive. And you'll find out more about that when I publish that. That will be the next video published after this one. I've also been to another pumping station, I won't say anything about that now, and the third one, which I also hope to publish before, will publish before Christmas, will be I think very interesting. It's very different to anything else I've done. I know the non-cruising videos don't have the same appeal to everyone, but it is variety the road trip, the Yorkshire Dales road trip, has been extremely well received, particularly from people overseas, some expats who grew up in the area and like to see it, and some people who have their ancestry in the Yorkshire area. So I'm pleased at how that's been received. Don't get the same viewing numbers as I do with the cruising videos, but that's life, I'm not worried about that they're well received and that's what is important to me. I cruised out on Sunday as I said it was a lovely day I moored up just beyond Bridge 22 there's a long straight there and I thought that would be a good place to moor. I was the only boat there <laughs> normally there's five or six boats along there but there were no boats there. I stayed there yesterday because the weather was bad then today I decided to move up to where I am now. I'm just beyond Bridge 27. I'm the first boat moored up on the left hand side beyond the bridge. There are another four boats here. I thought it was three originally but there are four other boats along here so I have company in that sense. <laughs> I don't know who they are though. It's been very quiet. There's only been about half a dozen boat movements today. I've never liked the look of this low-hanging tree trunk, which I have reported to the Canal and River Trust, but it is on the off side, and I think because of that no action is taken. I've just gone under Bridge 27, and I'm about to moor up. I've come in at a bad angle, unfortunately, which makes it difficult when I step off. Mooring up when it's wet, damp, the towpath is muddy. It's been raining quite a bit today. Yesterday it rained most of the day. It's not very pleasant, but I'm glad I've moved on. I was at Bridge 22 and I'm now at Bridge 27, which is one of my favourite mooring spots. There are three other boats along here. 
you might just be able to pick out the smoke from one of them <laughs> low boats coming it's not very cold actually it's quite pleasant but I have had the fire on the go in the cabin and I'm looking forward to getting in there so I'll catch up with you later It rained earlier in the morning, but it's been relatively dry since. It's overcast, it's been overcast all day. There are a lot of birds buzzing around. I'm gonna see if I can get them on film, just bear with me. I've got another little camera here and I'm not sure whether it will pick them up. <laughs> I think they've all gone now. <laughs> Yes, there's quite a few birds buzzing around. I'll see if I can catch those in a minute when I've stopped talking to you. I'll probably say this again at Christmas, but I do want to engage more with you. So next year, I'll be back to how I used to do it, I think. Um, I think that's quite important. Sometimes I worry that the quality of film isn't going to be very good or the lighting isn't very good in the boat or whatever, but I will do my best. So what more can I tell you? This trip is all about testing the batteries, testing the power station. Ah, I've just remembered something else that I've done. The actual inverter can be quite power hungry. And it was suggested by Tim from Onboard Solar, who fitted my, my third panel, because my original installation was from Onboard Solar. He said, why don't I buy a small 150 watt inverter? That comes with a cigar lighter, plug that in and run my router from that so that I don't have to run the main inverter, run a small inverter, which is less power hungry. I've been testing that. In fact, I've been using that all day for running the router. And that's working an absolute treat. I'm really very, very pleased with that. At the moment, I've just got it propped up on my, on my bookshelf and I'll make a proper space for it. But um, that's working very well indeed. <laughs> so, yeah. these birds are still buzzing around. Let me, let me turn this camera around, see if I can uh, get them on film. It's still not like it was earlier because there are fewer birds. Before they were sort of flocking. They're not actually flocking around like they did originally. When I first saw them, they were really all together. <laughs> and they're not doing that now. They're all sort of individual flying all over the place, but not as a group. <laughs> What a difference the weather is now. It's going to be a beautiful day. Good morning. It's a beautiful morning now. I'm trying to find somewhere to sit where the sun is lighting me up and there isn't too much shadow. So I hope this is the position. <laughs> I've experimented a bit already. What a night or what a morning I should say, when I was awakened it was raining so heavily, really really miserable, but today has always promised sunshine, most of the day we should have it, it's out now, it's absolutely glorious at the moment, I will be moving on a little bit later, but I've just thought of something else which I forgot to mention yesterday, when I had the inverter changed, 
And just to recap, I used to have a one kilowatt sterling inverter and I now have a two kilowatt pure sine wave inverter. When that was installed, the power was coming from the shoreline straight into the inverter, then from the inverter back to the consumer unit and effectively the immersion heater. I have a one kilowatt immersion heater on the boat for heating the water. What that meant was that if the power was to go out suddenly whilst the immersion heater was on, the immersion heater would then run from the batteries and would drain them very quickly. So that arrangement was not ideal. And many thanks to Pete, a fellow boater, he has now changed that for me. And I'm very grateful to him. So what we now have is an arrangement where I have two consumer units. In this picture you can see the original arrangement how it was with one consumer unit, a switch box which was switching the immersion heater on and off and also the battery charger because previously I had a separate battery charger. And then we've got my control panel for the 12 volts and the galvanic isolator. The switch for the immersion heater and what was the battery charger has been removed and replaced with a similar sort of consumer unit to the one I already had. So now the arrangement with the electrics is slightly different and if the power was to go off the immersion heater would also go off so it's no longer a worry. It's just that I'm one of these people who tends to leave their immersion heater on all the time and if I was away from the boat and the power went off suddenly it would drain the batteries. So that's now been overcome so I'm very very pleased about that. I'm going to bring this episode to a conclusion here. I hope you've enjoyed this. A bit of a break from what I've been doing recently. <laughs> I've got one or two jobs to do on the boat. As I said earlier, I do want to move on. So, unless you've got any questions, and I'm sure you have, put them in the comments. <laughs> I should just say many, many thanks to everyone for watching, new subscribers, regular viewers. It means a great deal to me. As I said earlier, I had a lot of comments on the um, New Yorkshire road trip, which I was pleased about because um, sometimes I don't get as many comments as I used to, but that has proved very popular. I've got a few in the pipeline that I've already discussed, so please look out for those. Meanwhile, all that remains for me to do and say is to wish you all well. Hope you're looking after your friends and families. Take the utmost care with whatever you're doing. Until next time, bye for now.